In this video, we'll be showing how to create a search form in our Pokemon app. So let's start by looking at what we have and what we want to have and the steps we're going to need to take to get there. So we have this array of 151 monsters that is coming from our server file, so our load function. And it's coming from here. It's getting put into this uh, return object here. And then that return object is in the page data, so it's in data right here. And then we use data.monsters and we loop through each of those monsters. So what we need to do is first interrupt here. So we can do selected monsters and selected monsters will be data.monsters, but filtered. So let's go ahead and make selected monsters. And we will take the data.monsters and filter it. And we will use the monsters in the filter. But what we're going to do is we're going to take selected string. So we'll just say const uh, search string here. And we'll give it a fake value for now. We'll do ch. And so if the monster name lower class includes that search string to lowercase, then we will show those monsters. And this has been done correctly. So we have all the ones with CH and none without. Our next step is getting a search form so we can change this value. And so let's go ahead and put it right above the monsters and we'll make it an input of type equals text. And then we'll go ahead and yep, bind the value of the search string. And it is not writable because we put it as const instead of let. All right, here we go. And when we change it, yep, this is working. Let's make this a little bit nicer. So first, we'll go ahead and make search string default empty. So we're not always searching for ch. Second, we'll put a placeholder here. And the placeholder is Pokemon name. There we go. That's looking a little nicer. However, we can do better. Let's give this input a class of search field. And then we'll go ahead and create some styles for that. So search field, we'll go ahead and first give it some padding. Five pixels, 10 pixels. All right, it's looking a little nicer. Then we'll go ahead and give it a border radius of five pixels. And we'll go ahead and give it a longer width. All right, cool. So here we are. And let's go ahead and make that uh, border a little softer. So one pixel solid. And instead of black, it'll just be uh, 333. There we go. So this is pretty good. And if we wanted to center this and call it a day, that could work for a lot of applications. However, there is another style of doing this type of input, and that's by using the form. So let's go ahead up here and we'll wrap this in a form tag and we'll start off super simple and then we'll put a second input here and this will be of type submit. And this will show up as a button and we'll give the button text a search. All right, but right now it doesn't do anything. We hit CH and it automatically does the search. We hit this, nothing. So here we need to put on submit. And here we can put a function. So we could just do a console.log, hello. And we'll go ahead and open up our inspector and see that this is working. Of course, we don't have to do it inline. We could call it to a, another function. So we'll call submit search and we'll go ahead and go up here and we'll create a submit search function. And it'll take in an event and we'll go ahead and call just console.log 
and saying, yes, we are in the submit search function. So we hit this and there we go. It is showing up. So now we know how to call a function when we hit this search button or when we just hit enter when we're on the form. That's the benefit of using form and then submit. So there are two more steps we want to take. First, we want to make it so that when we type in here, it does not automatically do the filtering. And then we want to make it so when we hit submit, it does do the filtering. So we'll take that in two steps. So first we're going to let form be an object which has a search string. And then instead of using the search string here, binding it to that one, we'll do it to the one on the form. So now we type in here and it does not change. Next, what we want to do is when we hit submit search, we want to take what is in the form and apply it to the search string that's used to filter the monsters. So we'll just say search string equals form dot search string. And let's go ahead and try that. CH, I'm hitting enter. There we go. Adding an A and I hit search. Even better. Now let's go ahead and finish this out by fixing the styling. So here we'll add a class of search form and attach some styles to that. We'll make it uh, display flex and then we'll go ahead and justify content to the center and that should center it and then we'll give it a margin of 20 pixels vertically and zero horizontally. There, so that gives us some good separation, setting it off. Then for the search field, we actually don't need a separate class. We can do search form and then an input of type equals text. And then we'll also put in one for the search form where the input of type is submit. And yeah, that looks pretty good. All right. So, excellent. This looks good and feels pretty good. There are a couple more options for this form that we're not going to do in this video, but I want you to be aware of. The first is that we could save the results via the query params. So we do search equals ch, and then that would make it easy for you to share your search and save it across sessions. Another possibility is to use form actions. So whenever you're using a form element, you can post it to the server. And what you would do is you would go to your page.ts and then alongside your export const load, you'd say export const actions and then do various actions. So you could do async search form, something like that. And then the advantage of this is that if the JavaScript isn't loaded yet, or if it's been turned off for some reason, you can still take the action and then server render things in your plus page dots felt. The other advantage of form actions is that if you make it so it's only run on the server, then you can include API keys and code that you don't necessarily want sent to the client. We'll go into the actions object in more detail in a future video. So thanks for watching. And in the next episode, we will be making these generation links clickable and we'll be changing the Pokemon that we're loading based on which generation is selected.